Welcome to our heavily soiled Milviz Cessna 310R. I was going ahead and grabbing those exterior shots and then I went for my lunch break and what do you know, a little bit of weather and clouds rolled in. That's okay, we're down here today in a uh, tropical location of uh, Ciro E. King Airport, also known as Charlotte Amali Field. This is the uh, identifier of Tango India Sierra Tango and we are on the island of St. Thomas. That is correct. Today we're going to be headed out towards Gustav III Airport, or as many of you probably know, that's um, also known as St. Bartholomew's Airport, and it's well known for its unique approach on final. So before we do that, though, we're going to have to clean up this aircraft. I apologize for all the junk on this aircraft and the exterior uh, shape that our paint is in, but um, we have a very nice clean aircraft ground crew button here. Ding! Just like that, we have got a brand new paint job. I absolutely love it. We are ready for today's flight, looking spick and span, nice and pretty. I'm going to open this up for some air so that we don't get to sweating in here. And uh, I'll go ahead and also uh, call our co-pilot up here and we're gonna fly with this fella today how you doing because you know more eyes are better than just ours keep us uh keep us uh about our wits and on t and on task here so that we don't forget anything and with that i'm gonna go ahead and begin to bring this uh, aircraft alive so one of the things i'm gonna do is just get rid of this uh, panel right away here so that it doesn't uh, cloud our view I'll go ahead and remove this yoke, and I'm also going to bring up these uh, breaker bars here to make our job a little easier on our uh, fingers for flipping these knobs. So let's go ahead and uh, bring this battery online. Of course, if I can uh, get my fingers to work properly, we'll just zoom in a little bit, separate the two interaction points, and then I'm going to go ahead and activate our uh, left and right numbers one and two magnetos for the right hand engine in the left hand engine I'm going to uh, signify that we're going to be having some uh, ground ops here and some engine starts so I'll also throw on the uh, strobe well not the strobes let's throw on the uh, nav lights for now and then we'll uh, bring our propellers to the uh, full forward position and I'm also going to throw our engine fuel mixtures to full rich and I'm gonna go ahead and let's crack the throttle a little bit on the uh, left hand side we'll start that first to get some sounds right away I'm gonna bring our uh, left hand auxiliary fuel pump into low and I'm gonna prime that engine alright let's go ahead and see if we can get the left hand engine alive here with a start Fantastic. So we'll go ahead and bring our idle RPM up to about, oh, how about around a thousand? That's great. Let's hop on over to the right hand side here and check our gauges for the left. So we're checking for oil PSI on the left, we're checking for uh, oil temperature, we're checking for uh, cylinder head temperature, and we're looking pretty good at the moment, so we're going to focus our attention back. To our panel down here we're gonna turn on some uh, aircraft electrics for a uh, battery supply on the juice there I'll bring my left hand auxiliary pump off and with our left and right magnos magnetos excuse me for the uh, right hand engine ready to go we're gonna go ahead and cycle the primer for the uh, right engine there I'll bring the throttle up a little bit with our boost pump on I'll go ahead and as always, verify that there's nobody out there in the uh, striking distance of the prop arc there. Let's go ahead and start up that right-hand engine. Eh, fantastic. Now let's hop on back over to the right-hand side of the instrument cluster here, and we'll look at our number two engine on the right there. We're checking for the same oil PSI, oil temperature, and cylinder head temperature. All is in the uh, green at the moment, so let's go ahead and hop back to the left side and we'll focus on bringing our alternator back on we're gonna go ahead and remove our auxiliary fuel boost pumps there and I'm also gonna reach over here to the left and turn on our taxi light 
So with that being the case, let's go ahead and start grabbing some heat on the pedo there for proper uh, instrument readouts. I'm going to also activate the avionics master switch. So today we're flying with uh, some steam gauges, as it were, and some digital gauges. That's just to lighten the workload for me. I'm going to go ahead while I'm at it and turn on our altimeter reporting mode for our uh, transponder here on a stand of a 7000. I'm also going to switch our uh, CDI to GPS so that when we actually are able to uh, track out to our uh, waypoints today, we'll have uh, no issues picking up that uh, navigational track. And as I said, we are traveling to um, St. Barth's, which is Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot Juliet. And to get there, we're going to use a low-level airway, but not before we program in some intersections to follow on our uh, Garmin GPS here. So I'll go ahead and grab some of that information for that, and then I'll be right back after I have it programmed in to save the uh, viewers out there some headache and some uh, boredom while I'm flipping some rotary dials, pushing some buttons, and getting everything ready for flight today. So in just a second, I'll be right back once that's programmed. All right, so welcome back. Now that I have the GPS navigation program in, you can see there on our uh, GNS on the top there are uh, waypoints and intersections as we're flying that low-level altitude uh, airway below 18,000 feet all the way out to Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot Juliet for the unique approach. So I'll go ahead and bring that up in plain words. We're going to Pasic, to LARP, to Juice, to Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot Juliet. So with that, this uh, hangar behind us you saw in the entry shots is ours. We do own it, so I'm not going to worry about too much with the wind blast. I'm going to go ahead and test these engines here, run them up, and basically uh, do a mag check on our left and right. So let's go ahead and carry out the uh, engine ops function test now that we're within range of uh, operating temperatures. Okay, let's bring the uh, right engine offline first here. And there's an auditory drop and rise. Auditory drop and rise. Checking the left. Drop and rise. Drop and rise. Okay, bring this craft back to idle. So fantastic, now's a great time. I'm gonna throw in a notch of flaps here. And with our taxi lights on, I've already contacted the tower. They've given us the clearance to uh, taxi out to the active. So let's go ahead and head out to the uh, active of runway 28. Let's remove the parking brakes to do so. And we'll go ahead and make sure we avoid these obstacles here, this fuel truck, and of course there's a plane halfway parked into the bushes. And it looks like a airport worker there standing in the middle of the taxiway for no reason. All right, we'll just go this way, I suppose, then. Fantastic. And it's a very short taxi and relocation to the uh, active here at 28 so I'm gonna go ahead left and right make sure there's nothing in our view here no one on short final nope nope all checked all clear that's fantastic I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some cabin air here to get this uh, breeze flowing through the uh, cabin so that we do not have to uh, have any issues with our climate today for the climate control and then uh, I'm gonna line on up here and as soon as I get clearance I'll bring you right back on the active give me just a second and we'll catch you in a second yep and we're back just like that we do have takeoff clearance I've gone ahead and queued up 5,000 foot on the altimeter for the uh, autopilot and I've also uh, set our 
uh, Garmin track to 280 degrees on the heading so that we can fly out runway heading as we take off. So with that, let's hit the road. of flaps that I had put in. Which conveniently reduces a lot of the noise on the uh, exterior model there. Makes us more streak and uh, sleek rather and aerodynamic. Fantastic. Climbing out at about 115 knots. At about 1500 feet a minute. Let's go ahead and make a right-hand turn. And that wind you hear, if you hear it, is all uh, gust today. As I said, we were taking those exterior shots with the clear sky, I believe, and these clouds did roll in, but that's okay. It won't hamper this aircraft's ability to perform or interfere with our scenery in any meaningful way. Seven seven Juliet, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. That's it. Let's have an acknowledgement. Tower November five zero seven seven Juliet, frequency change. Right, now that we have enough altitude above sea level, let's go ahead and pull our propeller RPM back a little bit. And I'm going to bring our manifold pressure right under 25 within the green arc there. And I'm going to briefly just level out here and activate the autopilot so that we can get our craft on a point of destination there. And there we are, autopilot activated. I'll bring the throttles back just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and cue a climb of 700 feet a minute up to 5,000. And then let's go ahead and turn on our nav. Now we're tracking towards the uh, magenta line down here at a distance of 20 miles just over. And we are on our way to St. Barth's. Some fantastic scenery to boot. everything looking smooth I'm going to uh, retract our landing lights go ahead and turn the rest of our lights on while we're at it there of course BFR conditions but it's always good to have the proper illumination exterior wise done on the aircraft for sure Now that we know we're safely headed to 5,000 feet, I'm going to go ahead and queue up about 10,000. That way we can save some fuel and some money in the process of our journey today. We don't have very much baggage on board, actually none at all, except ourselves, meaning me and the co-pilot. We only have about 50% fuel, which is more than enough to do the 100 plus mile, give or take trip that we're on today 
so we're just going to go ahead, sit back, relax, and pull back our engine mixture a little bit here. Try to get as much horsepower out of this aircraft as possible without running risk of too high cylinder temperature. And I'm going to go ahead and stay more on the uh, rich side to preserve our engine life. The nice thing about this aircraft, among the many nice things, is the uh, fact that it is capable of simulating engine failure and engine wear. So we're going to go ahead and observe that feature by trying to save on these uh, engines. I'm going to go ahead and swap on over to my battery here for my amp meter and check that we are indeed not pulling any amps off of the battery so we know that both of our left and right alternators are working on our left hand and right hand engine. While we're on our way to 10,000, I'm going to go ahead and hop outside and get some external views for you viewers out there that may be interested in checking out the exterior model of this aircraft and the uh, unbelievable scenery we have today. So let's go ahead and do that. And welcome back to the flight deck, pilot in command position. We are now cruising at just over 150 knots indicated airspeed. And we're looking at 22.5 nautical miles to our next waypoint of LARP. We're at 10,000 feet, you probably already noticed. And we are in a cruising condition. All of our gauges on the right-hand instrument cluster look fantastic for the left and right engines. We're pulling great fuel flow. We're getting a lot of uh, oil pressure and uh, decent oil temperatures as it were as well. So with that in mind, I'll save you the boredom. I'm just going to be sitting up here monitoring these steam gauges and these digitals and uh, making sure our flight goes according to plan. We're crossing this large body of water going over to uh, Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot Juliet. And uh, to save you some of that boredom, I'm just going to go ahead and Stop the record and I'll uh, activate it when we're closer to uh, our final approach into St. Barth. So feel free to uh, take a nap. And for you, it should be instantaneous. For me, I'm just going to be sitting back here, relaxing, taking sights, and enjoying these cookies that I brought. So we'll see you in just a second. All right, super cut edit on a film to the outside external view and just off of our left of the nose there is the uh, Princess Juliana Airport very uh, famous for uh, people standing at the end of the runway when the big jumbo jets take off and they go to full power they uh, experience the jet blast at the uh, end of the threshold of the runway and sometimes it even knocks people into the uh, water there so yeah you can basically just see the island and see the uh, clear crystal blue water there and uh, our airport is pretty much directly ahead right there off the nose just before the horizon there you can barely see it but let's go ahead and head back on into the uh, piloting command position in the cockpit there of course welcome back to the uh, piloting command position on the flight deck here that off to our right is uh, St. Barth's Island and we are going to basically come in on an approach in that little uh, bay area with the uh, crystal clear light greenish blue water there. So uh, you can see there's some uh, ships in the bay there and whatnot. So let's go ahead and announce our um, arrival here to St. Barth's while we're at it.
now it's going to give us a runway of 2-8, uh, even though we're selecting 10, but that's okay, so let's just announce our position. Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Juliet, traffic November 5077, Juliet, 3 miles northwest, 2,800 feet inbound to land runway 28. All right. I'll bring that up once again when we're on a final approach here. I'm just going to go ahead and make a slow right-hand turn a few uh, brief moments here over towards those uh, small hills that we call mountains on planet Earth. And uh, I'll go ahead and warn you ahead of time, there is some uh, relatively loud aerodynamic drag noises for the wind flow over these uh, wings and flaps when we do put them down, so that's just something to be aware of. I'm going to pull back the throttle enough so that we can get into the uh, white arch there. We're very close as it is. That way I can apply our first uh, our first set of flaps. And that's looking pretty good there. So let's go ahead and add those flaps. I'll go ahead and bring in another notch. It's letting me know that the wheels are not down. So let's acknowledge that by putting our landing gear down. And I can feel the aircraft getting quite heavy now. On the controls, we're losing airspeed and we have a lot of drag with the flaps. So I've set full flaps. We're making our right hand turn here to base. those flaps and let's see if we can't not get this uh, access port open for some fresh air now that we're on the ground yeah we got a marshaller right over there we'll make sure we clear that right wing tip there And stop right there. All right, let's go ahead and throw the parking brake on and bring this aircraft to a uh, stable shutdown 
state. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just pull back the fuel mixture. I'll pull the props back to uh, decrease full. Let's go ahead and remove our magnetos here, both right and left. Close up our cabin air in all shapes and manners. And I'll go ahead and remove the right and the left alternator as well as removing the uh, fuel auxiliary boost pumps that we had on for landing, of course. So let's go ahead and turn our nav lights off. We'll turn our strobes and our anti-collisions off. How's about we drop off the avionics master and the pedo heat? Let's go ahead and pull this uh, breaker bar down here and we'll remove battery power by pulling this other breaker bar. So, with that in mind, we are now here at St. Barth. We took the trip in our Cessna 310R by Milvis. Everything went A-OK. -okay. And we are here to enjoy the scenery, the weather, and the sandy beaches. So, thanks for joining the channel today. Greatly appreciate your viewership. Hopefully you're considering subscribing, liking, or disliking, possibly even leaving a comment below. Let me know what you think of the content, what you think of the aircraft. Let me know. Do you have this already? Are you thinking about buying it? And if you are thinking about picking it up, just an FYI, it's a fantastic product, well worth the price of admission. So once again, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for stopping on by. Bye-bye.